In this video segment, we're going to be showing you how to use the eye designer to create rhinestone patterns in the most effective yet simplest way. The items that you'll be needing are first the PHP 32 CB15 or the red tip blade holder, along with the CB15U-K30 blade. Some people call this a 60 degree blade. Now once you have those items or the blade holder, go ahead and place it into the plotter as you see here and lock it down. What you want to do now is enable your tangential emulation mode. What this does is it lifts up the blade in each corner so you get nice sharp corners when you're cutting thicker materials. So what you want to do is when you look at the machine, take note of your current condition. Press the pause key, press next three times, press enter, then press the right arrow key to get to the correct condition, then the up arrow key to set the tangential emulation, press enter, then press pause again. Now just you can set the force or the condition if needed. In this case, I'm going to raise it to 29. When I press enter, it goes into tangential mode, which mode 1 is OK, so press enter. But you want to set, set your start and end points to point 0.02, which I'll do now. I'll change the end by hitting the side arrow key and change that to point 0.02 as well. And then I press enter. I want to press test to test the cutting, so I'll do that. And what we're looking for is just a nice clean cut so you can pull out both the triangle and the square. There are certain setups that we can do in iDesigner to make creating rhinestone patterns a lot simpler. The first one we're going to talk about is setting up a toolbar. Now the way this is done, you go to View, then you select on Toolbars. You go down to Customize, and then you want to create a new toolbar by clicking on New, and then type in the name. In this case, I'm going to name it Rhinestone. Click OK, and then from here, it gives us a list of different tools we can add. The first one I'm going to add is Fit Object to Path, and then Clip Art Viewer, then Group and Ungroup, and then select all and then we're going to go up to clear and add that and the last one is going to be cut now keep in mind these are kind of like not in order so you're going to have to search up and down now when you add those tools you can actually put them in order and that's what we want to do in the order of the process so here's what you want to do you want to put group first ungroup second clip art viewer third select all fit the path clear and cut the way this is done is you click on the tool and then these two buttons down here move up and move down allows you to set the order move the tool up or down giving it the priority of order within the toolbar. It looks like we got everything done here and the cut tool is last. Next I'll go ahead and close and then you'll see my rhinestone toolbar available at this point. And you notice up in the upper left hand corner that's where all my tools are. I'm going to go ahead and create a star. And once I've got the star created, I'll shift it in the middle. I want to make sure that my line is thinnest just so I don't get confused. Then I'm going to create some text. And all I'm going to say is basically, I'm a star. Now when you're using fonts, you want to use single stroke fonts for a rhinestone, otherwise the pattern gets too convoluted. And I'll show you later on in the video how to do this, how to access your single stroke fonts. I'll move that into the middle. Next I want to go ahead and select all, and that's the reason I put this button up here. So I click on select all, 
and then I want to group them together. And you'll see why in just a second. I'll go to my clip art. I'll hit this up arrow folder. Choose Graphtech rhinestones and then click on the size rhinestone that I need and click OK. I'll place it right next to the star and then I'll click on select all again which will select everything and then fit the object. Now in this window you want to click on nodes and distance and then change this value here to 0.25 and that depends on the size of the rhinestone of course but just as a starter I'd start with that value. I want to go ahead and zoom in on the first circle rhinestone and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the line because I don't want to cut that. I want to, don't want to be part of my cut. So I select on the line, select on the circle, and then I click on clear. And what that does is that gets rid of the line along with the first rhinestone. So I get a nice clean cut. Now it's just a matter of sending it to my cutter. Click on cut plot and here I am. Now all these little toolbars can be set up as shortcut keys. Let me show you how this works. If I go up here to options and then go down to customize shortcuts, here I'm given dialog where I can set up shortcut keys to speed up my process. So I'll go to group. Now it's control G right now but what I do is click here and then press F4. That sets up and then assign. And that sets up my group then this clip art to go, I can actually select graphic rhinestones and use that as a or assign a shortcut key. So, so I click there again and assign F5. That way every time I press F5, it'll immediately get to those graphic rhinestones, click assign, and then continue on with the other tools. Select all is control A. In this case I'm making it F6, and then I continue with fit object to path and F7 and you notice that I'm putting these in I'm assigning function keys in sequence F4 to F7 so I can just press one button after the other as I'm going through this now if I press on F5 it gets me right to those graphic rhinestones I click on the size that I want and basically go through the same process place the rhinestone next to the to the object and then I press F8 for fit to path, fit the object path, make my settings, and then click OK. And there I've done it. I've done the same exact thing, the same exact steps as before, yet I'm using the shortcut keys. Now the next thing is, is your line fonts. If I click on text here, and then I click on the sign blank, I come up here to my fonts, and you notice how I have these different fonts. I have some selected as, as line fonts, but notice if I was to try to select all the line fonts, I'd have to go through here and view each one of these to see which ones are which and which ones I want to use. This is kind of, I can do that, but it's kind of undesirable. So if I press this little F key up in the corner here, watch what happens. It gives me this menu. Now here I can select the line font, as you can see here. And I go down to line font and I click on select and now it will show a group. So I minimize all fonts and there's my line fonts. So now I've got all the line fonts within one folder and I can select any one and easily go through them as to which one I want to use. This too is a real powerful feature. One little item that I would like to share with you is about your sign blank. Right now it's 15 by 15 is my sign blank on here, but what I really want to do is I want to set my sign blank to basically the size of maybe the t-shirt I'm working with. The reason we do this is just to give us boundaries of the area that we have to work with. Now if you look at a t-shirt, depending on the size of the t-shirt, you set that area. In this case, I'll set it to maybe 8 inches by 4 inches. So I go to my eye designer and I click on layout, go down to length size, and I do that. I change it from 8 inches for the width and then 4 inches for the height. And in this way, it sets up my boundary exactly what I have to work with, 8 inches by 4 inches. Now I import a little design and I make sure it's within those boundaries. 
Now this part of the video I'm speeding up just a little bit, but basically it's the same steps. We're going to use our hotkeys. First we're going to get into our um, rhinestones. So I press F5 to get the graphic rhinestones. I click on the rhinestone that I want. And once again I place it beside the graphic. And then I select all, then group all, then fit to path, set my settings, and then click OK. Next, obviously, I want to delete the line and the first rhinestone. But before I do that, you'll notice that these two rhinestones are a little close together, and that sometimes can happen. It, so what I might want to do is drag this rhinestone over, and always check over your patterns to make sure you don't have any overlapping holes for the rhinestones. I've got it done. I'm going to go ahead and delete the line and the first rhinestone, and there's my pattern. Now to cut it, once again, I cut them. I select my cut icon, and I'll rotate it 90 degrees. I can set my size of my media if I want to, if I'm using a smaller or larger piece. In this case, I'm going to type in 13 inches. And then, one thing I want to warn you about is once you create your rhinestones, don't resize it, because it will resize the rhinestones themselves and give you larger or smaller holes than you want. A little trick that I would like to share with you, or tip or trick if you want to call it, is the ability to set up your own rhinestone set. Now notice in this set of rhinestones that Graphtech provides for you, if you move on down, you've got this one rhinestone. Well, what that is, is that's clip art with all the sizes of the rhinestone, the common rhinestones. Now what you can do is you can select this, take the rhinestones that you don't need, like say for instance if I only use the 16s, then I can go ahead and choose that, I'll set it to the side here, and then I'll save it as a iDesigner file. And what I'll do is I'll put it into the clip art, which under C, iDesigner, and then clip art, and then type in my own folder, which I'm doing here, my rhinestones, and then save the file as my rhinestones again. And what you can do is you can click and select different rhinestones and save this file. Now watch what happens. Let me create a new file or new drawing. I go to my layout, go down to the clip art category, and I can add to this. So I click on add. I type in, this, once again, my 16 rhinestones. And then I just have to sh show iDesigner where it's located. So I go to C, go to iDesigner, I go to clip art, and then I go down to my rhinestones and click OK click OK again, click OK. Now, watch what happens. If I go to Layout and I go to uh, Clip Art Go To, there is my rhinestones and there is the, the rhinestone setup that I have created. Just a neat little feature in case you want to just, if you use certain types of rhinestones, certain sizes, and you want to create your own setup, you can do that. The way you do this is once you bring that in there, you bring in your design, you click on the rhinestone color or set that you want along with the, the logo, and then you go through the process. You go to fit the path, you set it to the distance you want between each stone, you click OK, then you go to delete the pattern that you don't want, or the line pattern, along with the original rhinestones, and then you send it out to the cutter, and click on cut. Now up to this point, I've shown you basically the software, but I haven't shown you the process for cutting. When it starts cutting, it's obviously going to cut all the little holes that you see here. Now when the pattern is complete, you want to remove the material, not the holes. You want to remove the, the pattern from the backing, leaving the holes and all these, obviously the backing. Once you've got it, you cut it down, you place it on a piece of Sintra or some kind of PVC material. Then you go ahead and lay out the rhinestones, perhaps shake it a little bit, and then take a brush 
and actually brush the rest of them into place. And they'll automatically fall into place because of the size of the circle. Next, we take a transfer sheet, place it over the pattern, which will hold the pattern in place, and then we just bring it over to the T-shirt. Now, each rhinestone has a little uh, material on there for heat pressing, and then we go ahead and heat press right, right onto the T-shirt. We take it out, let it cool, and then pull off the transfer sheet, leaving the rhinestone and the pa leaving the rhinestone pattern. And here's the final result. For more information on any of the supplies and equipment that you've seen in today's video, please contact one of our bestblanks.com sales professionals at 1-888-431-7385.